this paper is uh, drawn from my PhD thesis uh, at the University of Manchester, which I, I, I defended last June 23. Uh, we are fortunately successfully. And uh, one of the few papers that uh, well, I have written out of the PhD and hope to, to publish, um, perhaps by way of a postdoctoral uh, degree uh, fellowship somewhere. Um, the title of my PhD thesis is uh, it's not that. Uh, it's uh, the title of the paper. Uh, it is uh, titled mm -hmm. Blurring and Defacing the Other. Um, ideology and religion in the discourses of radical liberation movements. Um, yeah, please. I, I actually looked into how um, how ideology is born through uh, through good solidarity and uh, how I mean I'm looking into the, the way the way society itself is constituted through Group which has a sacred 
transcending the group itself. Um, that that kind of sacred is susceptible to turning into well, what I call in my work uh, a sacred regime or or an ideology. Meaning, um, ideology could be a radicalization of of the sacred of religion. Meaning that religion is always susceptible to turning into a sacred regime, to turning into a, a sort of ideology. And that therefore, uh, because the sacred is is ontologically central to any constitution of human group, to any society, then therefore ideology is, is permanent in human society, in the way that religion is also permanent. There cannot be any society without, without religion, but then uh, the corruption of of religion as a form of a sacred uh, that turns it into an ideology also makes ideology a permanent tendency of all human groups and therefore also of uh, every individual. So uh, the sacred, as I said, is a well has a transcendent status. It transcends the group. All right, such as where Durkheim would say that. Uh, where society precedes the individual. I mean, uh, there must be society first before there are individuals, even when, paradoxically, there could not be society without individuals. Because, uh, well, uh, the moment we interact with each other, we have to first, well, uh, make a basis of the interaction. And the basis is, of course, <laughs> that we must be able to understand each other. And that understanding is already a set of rules that is apart from us, but then work on us and in fact make themselves effective by way of our interaction. So, the sacred is also seen as constitutive of society, which I already discussed, and, and community in the form of, of solidarity. And generally, the time would call this a, a collective uh, conscience, or what we call a, a collective sense of itself, of a group of, of people. Without this, of course, any society would not have been possible. As, of course, I am coming from the assumption that uh, uh, I am coming from the assumption that uh, that any collective conscience is going to be expressed as sacred, and therefore is going to be expressed, institutionalized as as religion. Um, and then, of course, religion is just but the institutional form of of the sacred. Religion takes takes the sacred and expresses it institutionally as a legitimate power in, in society. Uh, this is the reason why well religion itself, I mean it comes from the, the term religare, which means to bind, to bind people together around some some set of uh, of rules. I mean some some kind of solidarity or identity. Which necessarily, as uh, as religion binds people together, also divides people from without. I mean, uh, it binds people within and divide people without, because at is at, as it is involved in uh, in in constituting the identity of the group, then it also differentiates itself from from other group through well discourse. Well, by this course, I mean here not only the written ones, but uh, but but the way people interact in, in society, the way I mean uh, the meanings that percolate within the, the social spaces and that that guide their their interactions. So um, I, I look into the process of uh, ideologization, which, as I said, is 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 the radicalization of the sacred of religion, and I call the, um, the a sacred regime. And this this happens through a self-referential discourse. I mean, uh, when people live together, they, they live about their lives, they interact in society. Um, the tendency for them is to, um, well, in a while, after a while, uh, to try to imagine their own identity, their shared identity as unique to them, through uh, referring to, to what they do as not only unique but uh, yeah, as, as, as uniquely their, their own. What I mean by self-reference of this work is they always 
try to derive legitimacy from them the, from themselves and from what they do. Uh, so this this happens through a certain kind of uh, self referential discourse, which is just the process of forming of identity or or group solidarity. It is the curse of, uh, of human beings to uh, what to to make out well identities as they they live their lives collectively. Because without this, there would be no, no sense in living together. And of course, uh, having an identity also uh, somewhat regularizes their, uh, their interactions, making their, their society stable and well, as of course they, want, they would want to do, they want to achieve, um, permanent. And then, uh, this is not, of course, a corruption of what they call the sense of the other, because this is not this is just the tendency of all groups to, to force uh, identity through self-referential discourse. But ideology comes in more when, when, uh, when the group begins to imagine a, a radical other. Um, well, as, as I saw, for instance, in, in the movements, in, in, in the German left and the Emmanuel left and the Communist Party, um, their identity is, uh, is derived more from, uh, from the way they construe uh, their, their antipode, their what is not them, what, what, they, what they consider to be their enemy. Which, of course, for the, the liberation groups, it is the, the military state, the, the government. So they, they would imagine the radical other as the antithetical other. They would not, as much as possible, to become like like that other. And therefore, the, the construction or the imagining of, of the radical other will now flow into the construction of their own identity, forming a, a level or intensifying their sense of self as a collective self, and therefore uh, weaving into their already established notion of, of self, which of course first they, they construed by way of their own self referential discourse in everyday life. So, um, I found out through the help of the, the readings that the supervisors uh, advised me to do to five minutes uh, that the ideology is that ideology is a certain kind of uh, misrecognition. It is a misrecognition of the self. I mean, it is a fissure, a a gap. Um, that that, for instance, uh, those who are involved in in ideology, uh, those who are involved in ideology, uh, one of the conditions of this is that uh, that they are not aware that they are in ideology. They are not aware that they are enacting a, a, a kind of an ideology because it is at the condition of the possibility of having it. Meaning, uh, once ideology becomes aware of itself as ideology, it ceases to be that ideology. But then, uh, the, the getting out or stepping out of the ideology by becoming aware of it is, of course, only a stepping into a new ideology. Uh, so there is no, no, no way out of the, the sacred regime. Because, uh, well, as people live their lives, they're going to, well, to love what they do, uh, to, to consider what they, they do as unique, etc. And that is the way towards idealization. Uh, forming a sense of self and then turning the sense of self into a radical sense of self through the, the forming of the radical other and self repressive discourse. And then the, the sense of self as ideology then will take the form of a, a taken for granted reality. The way, for instance, uh, what we do in everyday life is not anymore, well, we don't, we don't actually ask questions about what they do, what we do in everyday life, right? It is taken for granted. And these are the cores for me, the sources of our own ideologies. Because we are not aware that that we are enacting such uh, such thoughts or such ideas or such sense of self or sense of the world. And of course I, I was led into into thinking that that ideology, when as much as religion is permanent, then ideology itself is, is permanent. We cannot uh, wrap it up. We cannot. 
We can get out of ideology because the process of ideology and democratization is embedded in, in the sense of self of each group. So that one thing to get out of ideology is of course premise on the basis of becoming conscious of that ideology is taking in new ones, new, new ways of looking at the world which later on as practice would, uh, would constitute uh, the taken for granted world. Um, yeah, this is the, the, the operating concept is I, I used in, in, my, in my thesis. That, that, that the human being, uh, well, that the sense of the other is fundamental uh, in, the, in the constitution of, of the human being. That the human being could not have, have become human I mean, uh, without, uh, without having first a sense of what it is not a sense of, of the other. Um, but then, yeah, because primarily in sociology, uh, I don't want to react to me on the sense of the other. Uh, in sociology, the, the human being is a social being. There was nothing in the self at birth. There was no sense of self. And the first, uh, the first sense of, of the self will occur only when we, be, when we get to interact with, with something that is not us, that is not the self. So it is primarily derived from a sense of difference, uh, which in philosophy we call it the, the ontological difference. The sense of self is derived from a sense of, of the other. Uh, the moment you imagine you have a body, it was given rise by, by, the, by the imagination that, that there is something other than, than the body first. So it is a, a time's up. Um, <laughs> but then the sense of the other, the sense of the other, um, yeah, um, the sense of the other is, is corrupted, okay? It's corrupted in, in ideology, uh, which means that it was, it is, it is radicalized. And, and this enables, or not that enables, but this makes it susceptible for those who, whose sense of the other is corrupted in, sec in, 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 in secular ideology and religious ideology to to do a kind of violence that well uh, sometimes already is without identification. I mean, you, you you do violence for the sake of doing it because you have lost identification with, with another. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then my conclusion is that well, religion is permanent. Religion and society is birth, life, and faith. Uh, we can escape religion. Um, and then the incorrectness of secularization theory. It states that as a society becomes more modern, uh, then uh, religion is going to just uh, dissolve into, into modernity. There will come a time when there will be no religion because modernity is going to dissolve it. It is not true. Because even when there is modernity, religion will just be taking other forms. Of, uh, of expression. As long as human beings congregate and live together, they will form religions because the sacred itself is the basis of their being together. So, um, and the susceptibility of religion to ideologization, as for instance, uh, practiced by, by the now becoming uh, again prominent uh, expressions or movements of religious nationalism in many parts of the world. I think it is a this is a, an option of, uh, of globalization. Even when globalization wants to, to unify the world under one, one canopy, uh, religious nationalism, well, uh, is uh, somewhat re-energized because there is now a, an other which they can imagine to be not, well, not them. So they can, yeah. Uh, and then there could, there could be a possibility in fact, it is true that there is a secular religion, uh, secret religiosity in secular ideology. Even when, for instance, the communists would think that they are secular, they are in fact religious about their being secular. Uh, and uh, this is because of the, the, the sublime of ideology which they necessarily develop through their, their, their discourse. Yeah, I think that's, that's all. Thank you. Thank you.